In this video, I'm going to go over three useful um, tools that are important for data wrangling and manipulation in pandas, um, especially when you're working with uh, data sets or data frames. Uh, this include the where, get, and at methods. So in uh, we're going to work with the Iris data set. So the first step is to import the NumPy and pandas library. Just gonna run that. Then we're gonna use the uh, Iris dataset. Uh, we just import that from this URL.csv. So we use this function read underscore uh, .csv or other CSV to read the CSV file. So once we import that, uh, we now have our uh, data frame Iris uh, data frame. So the first uh, method is the where. Now this method allows us to perform a uh, conditional operation, meaning that you're gonna use a condition, right? Uh, and this operation you can perform on arrays or data frames. And this allows you to create a new column based on the results of those conditions, right? So uh, in summary here, the where um, method is a very powerful tool that we use for data wrangling and manipulation in pandas. So in this example, uh, we're gonna use the np.where from NumPy. Then uh, as argument, we're just gonna subset the data frame uh, or rather this data set iris. And we wanna apply some condition on this uh, column, right? So this column here, uh, in fact, if you just go here and uh, uh, we just do iris, um, iris.head, just to see how uh, our data set looks like. So we run that and you can see we have the following columns, right? So here we're gonna use a Boolean operator, right? Or just a condition. So say greater than three, okay? So if this is true, then we just wanna, uh, you know, say that it's actually long, right? Uh, otherwise, then this is gonna be short, right? And that's how we do it. Then once we get the results of this function, we store it in our new, uh, column that we we call pedal underscore length underscore category right so we run that you can see we now have a new uh, column that includes the following uh based on this condition right and we can see the petal length here uh clearly this is less than uh, greater uh, uh less than three so it's gonna be short uh what if i just change this to tail right you can see now this changes to long. Why? Because now this satisfies the condition here greater than three. Okay. Uh, again, here we can uh, do multiple uh, conditions here. So, for example, we can say petal length or petal width. Width. You can say uh, if it's greater than or rather it's less than one point zero. Okay. You can uh, call this white, right? And then separate that by a comma. Then over here, we could say also, uh, if this is less than 1.5, say for example, let's call this yellow, right? Otherwise we call this purple, meaning it's greater than 1.5. Uh, so we're just gonna do that. Okay, so when we run this, um, so uh, where did we go? On? So we need to put a comma here. So when we run that, we can see here, that when the pedal uh, when the pedal width right is less than uh, 1.0 right it's, it's gonna be white right if I quickly change this to tail right so anything that's greater than 1.5 right it's gonna be purple and in between there we, will, we should be able to find some yellow okay the next method here is get uh, we use this method to access a value from a dictionary like object. So this is very useful, especially when you have nested data structures um, like dictionaries, right? You can go in there and access uh, the data. Uh, this is very powerful, especially with data wrangling and analysis, right? Uh, and especially if you're using like JSON files, which has some nested structure, you can quickly traverse or navigate through this uh, nested structure to extract specific data that you need, right? So let's look at an example here. So here we just say from our data frame, we're gonna apply this function get, and we just wanna get this column, right? The values from this column, right? Uh, again here, so once we have that, we store under this name uh, object, and you can see here, we just extracted specifically all these values, right? The first five observation, and we go here, you can see these are the observation for the, um, in our case, sample width, right? Uh, three, two, three, three, 
uh, and uh, so we have, um, and that's actually sequ sequential, right? So if we go back here, uh, you can see already we have that. Uh, where is that? 3.5, 3.0, 3.2, okay? So that's what we have, but at least for the five observation. So that's just the gap. And also we can do that for length, right? So we do that and we can easily get the values as quickly as possible. Uh, again, here, there's another argument here. So let's say if we don't get any results, what do we do? We can just, we can say uh, default, default uh, equals to zero, right? So once we have that, we can process this as default equals zero. Okay, so these are useful features so that uh, you, you know you 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 don't encounter an error, right? So uh, it's set to default to zero if the column does not exist. Okay, and then uh, lastly, in this example for this data set, we're gonna use the add. So add here is used to access a single value in a data frame. Okay, especially when you're using the rows and columns, uh, column labels, right? Now, one benefit of using add here is much faster, especially when you're using other indexing uh, methods because you can access a single value, right? Now, this is an alternative method. Uh, we already used lock and iLock. Uh, this is much faster because you're just getting a single value from a single row, uh, you know, especially if you are accessing the data from the rows and columns, right? So let's look at an example here. So here we're just saying from the first uh, um, you know, observation, we want to access this uh, column, right? So we, we process that and we can see uh, we just extracted the single value for sepal length. If we go back here, we can see that uh, the first observation at zero, right? The sepal length here is 5.1. So we've just extracted this specific uh, value. That's what it means here. Okay. So uh, again, we can also modify this. We can say uh, at this, uh, so we wanna modify this 5.1, right? Um, rather, we wanna modify this observation, but what we wanna modify? We wanna modify this column sp uh, species, uh, species type, okay? We wanna replace that with Cetosa. And you can see here, I've already run that. Uh, I can always run it again and can see we just replaced, uh, the sp uh, rather we created a new, species type and we've just uh, rather put uh, a default value there, Setosa. Okay, so that's just a demo to show you how powerful this can be. And lastly here, uh, again, uh, we can also replace the value. So for example, here, uh, we have the separate length as 5.1. So here I could just say, uh, maybe we wanna replace this 4.9, right? Wanna replace that with maybe uh, let's say 6.8 here, right? Uh, so we just print it out and say the updated value at uh, position one here, uh, the sepal length here. So we wanna replace this to 4.9, right? Okay, so we do that. Um, again, if we rerun this, uh, we're gonna see that. So let's go here. Um, so we rerun this again. Uh, you're gonna see that we've now replaced it with uh, 6.8, okay? So uh, these are just useful functions in panels, especially if you wanna access a single value really quickly. And then drop is pretty simple. Um, so let's say we wanna drop this, uh, maybe some specific column, right? So we're just gonna uh, pass this uh, function called drop, right? We're gonna use this function called drop. So with drop here, again, uh, we just specify the column. So let's say we wanna specify from the existing column. So let's say we wanna uh, uh, drop maybe species type. So we're gonna just type it the way it appears. So type in place here, we just wanna uh, from the, uh, we just wanna use the original data set, right? Uh, so again here, we're not creating a new data frame. So we run that and we cannot notice that, um, this column has already been uh, been removed, okay? So really quickly, let's look at another example here. We're gonna load this data set. You can see we have the following columns, right? Um, uh, so we have passenger ID, survived, P class, name, and so on and so forth. These are very famous uh, data set that we use in machine learning. But for the purpose of this uh, video, we're gonna just, uh, 
uh, see how we're gonna use the get key, right? So here the get function, okay? So here we just wanna subset, you know, so it's saying from this data frame, uh, this object Titanic, wanna access this column. This column here is fair, right? So we wanna access specific values, right? Specific uh, fair for each of these based on this index, right? So we just say get and then we specify the key. So we wanna access maybe from uh, one here. So we wanna display this, uh, maybe we wanna display the eighth one and so on and so forth. So this is essential what we're doing here. So maybe I could just make this to maybe 25 here, right? So if I do that and print it out, you can see these are the values here and we can confirm that at 23 here, we have uh, 35.5, uh, 5,000, right? So that corresponds to this, right? And at 13 here, we have that 1.275, right? So this is actually what the get function does. It just extracts for us specific values based on a specific column that we specify. What if we wanted to ask some question here? So we wanted to know the gender or sex of this particular passenger at maybe observation number five, right? We know that this uh, individual is actually male, right? Based on looking at the data, but what if we don't know, right? So again here, uh, so we could just specify here at position five, we wanna uh, get the value for this column sex, right? So and that will just specifically mention this is male, right? So let's say we pick a different one, like 20. We haven't looked at this, but we want to know. So this is male. If we go here, you can see clearly uh, this is actually male. So these are useful function when you quickly want to answer those what if questions. And lastly here, let's say we wanted to do some coding, right? Uh, uh, so we can encode here. You can say, for example, here, we want to create a new column. This we are going to store the functions or rather the results for this, uh, you know, function. So we use the NP where uh, from our data set, right? Our data frame, we're going to subset. We want to use this column, okay? And we want to find, right? So anything that is equals to female, if it's true, then code that with one. Else, it's going to be zero, right? And then we populate this new column with those one, zero, zero that correspond to uh, this sex column. If it's female, then it's going to be as uh, one. If it's uh, male, then it's going to be zero, right? And so on and so forth. And you can see here, uh, for every individual who is a male, uh, again, this is zero. If it's female, 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 it's going to be one, one, one. So again, you can see the where uh, we can use that with a condition here. We've already seen where we use a greater sign, so on and so forth. Uh, again, here, lastly, how to drop. So we have an existing column here called impact, right? So we just specify here, dot drop, text to argument, specify the name of the column. Then axis equals to one, just says along the column. Axis equals one, just say along the column. So find the existing column and drop the entire column. So run this, you can see now we no longer have uh, this column called impact. So in summary, we can say here, the NP where uh, is just an NumPy function that returns elements, um, again, chosen based on some specified conditions, right? So we use this in conjunction with uh, pandas, especially with Boolean indexing, uh, when you wanna assign values to your data frame. Uh, again, here, the add function here, uh, again, uh, allows for fast and efficient uh, 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 setting of your individual values in a data frame. And it's faster than using lock or iLock. We have already used that before. Okay, and lastly, the get here, uh, again, it's a pandas method that is very fast and efficient and easy to use, especially if you're working with uh, data frames, right? Uh, since you can access uh, those individual keys, uh, um, uh, data by keys. Uh, again, we've already seen how to access that by keys over here. Uh, so it's very useful, again, when you're using nested dictionaries, right, or JSON files that have nested data structure. So overall here, we're saying the, all these methods are very useful and powerful tools uh, for our data wrangling and data manipulation in pandas, right, because it allows you efficient uh, access and setting of those individual values that we've already seen. Uh, and you can see you can easily create new columns based on uh, the results of those functions, right? And we can see how we just replace value based on some conditions.
All right, and that wraps it up.